Hey guys, welcome back to a new amazing video which is about supporting multi-screen sizes in Jetpack Compose. And the first thing you want to know is what screen sizes we have. We have three different types of screens, which are the compact screens, which are smartphones, you can say, or screens that have a width less than 600 dps. We have the medium screens, which have, of course, a width bigger than 600 dps, and these can be small tablets, you can say. And we have the expanded screens, which have a width larger than 840 dp. And these are, of course, large tablets. And we'll see how we can make our UI fits all these screens, and of course, all of that in Jetpack Compose. So let's check our Android Studio. This is the app that we will be building as you can see. Right now we have these list items and if we rotate our screen, now we have a different screen width. But as you can see how large the items are. But let's just go back and see the app that I already built and prepared. Here we have the same items again, but if I now rotate the screen, you see now they are shown in a different way. A way that makes them look better. Okay, the other thing we'll see is this kind of profile screen, which we just have some profile info from name, email, and gender. And here you can say an image profile or something. In a fire rotate, everything stays the same, just a scrollable layout like this. But if I go to the app that I already prepared, and here we have the same UI again, if I rotate, now it's shown in a different way, which is a lot better, as you can see. We don't have that much empty space as we did in the other app. So let's go to the other app. We have a lot of empty space from the sides here. And now in our new app, we actually make use of that space like this. So we'll see how to do this in Jetpack Compose and let's get started. Okay, I have already prepared this demo app right here, which is the one that you've been seeing. This one, of course, when we rotate, nothing happens. Our screens stay the same. Here, I'm just calling the profile screen. I also have the item screen. So I can also call the item screens if I want or the profile screen. And nothing is different in my item screen. I just have a bunch of items, eight items in a lazy column. You already saw how they look like. In the profile screen, again, I have a column. I have first the image, you can say. It's not exactly an image here, but suppose it's an image. And here I have the user info, email, name, email, and gender. And the user info is just two texts. Nothing is special. And I show all of that in a column. And I have the main activity. I just call the screen that I want. Now nothing is special. But now what we're going to do is we create a new file that will actually make us support all these screen sizes. So this file is going to be called window size like this. And it's just a file. And this file will have a bunch of things. The first thing is a data class that is called window size like this. And in this window size now, we'll have two things, which are the height and the width. Okay, so var width of type window type. We will see what window type as well. And then duplicate this for height. And window type can be three things, as I already told you. A compact, a medium, or an expanded. Okay, so let's create that in a unum class. So unum class window type. We first have a compact medium and expanded. Okay, so the width can either be one of these and the height can either be one of these, depending on the screen size, the actual screen size of the device. Let's create some space. And now we want to create a composable function called remember window size. And this function returns a window size. Now we want to return this window size with, of course, the width and the height of our device. That, of course, is going to be either compact or medium or expanded for each of these. And to get that height and size of our device, we need a configuration. So var configuration is going to be equal to local configuration dot current. Now we get the configuration in which we have the height and the width. Now we're going to return, of course, a window size. The width is going to be when my configuration dot screen width in dp is smaller than 600 dot dp. So any device that has a width that is smaller than 600 dot dp, then that is a compact device or the compact width device. So window type dot compact. And then we can duplicate this two more times. If it's larger than 840, then that is a medium. Larger than that, then of course, it's expanded. Okay, we can just copy this for height. 
and the height of course we want to get the height screen width height dp and here screen width height dp here i don't have actually to write dp like this i can remove that and just like this now i know my screen width and height whether it's compact medium or expanded if it's compact then i'm going to use a layout if it's medium i'm going to use a different one if it's expanded if i want even to use a whole different one for expanded then i can do that what i usually do is just use a layout for compact and then another layout for both of these which is going to be displayed in large screen sizes now what we can do is let's start with our items this is how they look by default and let's actually call that in our activity so items screen let's run the app and see that before we do anything this is how they look like and if we rotate the device nothing really changes they are very large like this and they don't look good and what we are going to do in our items screen we have now this layout or this ui that is technically for compact devices we just take it right here create a new composable function called items screen maybe start it with a compact like this compact items screen and paste that so this is for compact and then we'll check our screen size by creating our variable of screen size so var window size is remember window size of course this one returns a window size that has the width and the height and then let's go back here all i'm going to do is when my window size dot width now i care about the width now it just depends right now if your screen relies on the width then you can actually go for width if your screen relies on height now it just depends in my case i care about the width if you care about the height in your screen then you go for height okay so if it's window type dot compact then i'm going to call my compact item screen else i'm going to create another function for that or another screen and for that, I'm just going to copy this one. It's just going to be a little bit different. And this one, of course, for medium to expanded item screen. Okay, so medium to expanded. Now, we won't have a lazy common because we normally have a lazy common. Let's actually check that in the app if I, I need to run it. As you can see, I have a normal lazy common. Now, what I'm going to have is actually a lazy vertical grid so that's what i'm going to use in my case i still need this modifier and i need to pass my commons that is going to be grid sales dot adaptive and i'm going to go for 250 dp as the main width of course now i'm using a lazy vertical grid in my case but it doesn't mean you should use that as well you need to find what fits your screen the most for medium to expanded screens Okay, the rest of the things are going to be just the same. So I can even take this item from here, for example, if I want to extract it in a different function. Let me run the app and let's see now what, what's the difference after now we actually check the screen width. Okay, so normally it's still the same. But if I rotate, as you can see, now I have a larger width and they are showing a different way. Of course, this will be the same for a tablet or whatever screen that actually is more than 600 dps, which is what we consider as a compact screen and these numbers of course are not from my head or anything these are from the official documentation of android okay so that's it now for this screen now what we move on is to let's go to our main activity and call our profile screen let's check that this is how it looks like if i rotate my device it doesn't look good as you can see i need to fix that let's go now to our profile screen and we'll do the same we can actually take this again, extract it to another function, composable, let's call it compact profile screen. And it's paste all of that inside it. And we'll check that again, so let me just copy it from there, like this. Paste it here, let me delete these two. And here for compact, then I'm going for compact profile screen, else, I'm going to go for a different screen that I'm going to create. And of course, my new screen is going to be called medium to expanded profile screen. So composable, medium to expanded profile screen. Okay, I'm actually going to paste this, but then adjust it for my new screen size. Let's paste it right here. And the first thing that I want to do, let's check our screen. 
let's actually run the app first so we can see what we want to do okay here it is now everything is in a, a column and what i want to do is actually if i rotate my screen then i actually don't call anything but let me just go back what i want to do is to use a row so in the row i will have the image right here next to it this column of text that's what i'm going to do okay let's go here we'll have the same spacer but now we'll use a row and that row does need a modifier modifier dot fill max width and then vertical alignment is going to be alignment dot center vertically okay good now what i want to do is take everything into my row so let's copy everything that i have and then put it inside the row right here and then i can actually now delete this one i don't need that anymore all i really need is to put these in a column as you can see because they should be on top of each other and in a row they will be next to each other so Right here, I'm going to go for a column and put this user info inside it. Here, I'm going to go for width because I am in a, a row and it's say 100.dp. Now, let's just call this function up here, medium to expand the profile screen. And then let's try the app. Great, as you can see, now we use that space that we had left previously because previously we had a lot of space in the end here in the start but now we use it in a different way we can also try this app so it's actually open any other app like gmail and then we can do this to actually use split screen like this and let's use our app so this is how it's going to look like in smaller screen because of course its width is less than 600 dps and this is it for this video in which we learn how to support multi-screen sizes if you like what I'm doing, you can support me by subscribing, liking the video and sharing it with your friends. See you in the next video and bye.